Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. In this video, we're going to take a sidestep from our current theme of hosting a website on a Raspberry Pi and have a quick look at Visual Studio Code. The reason we're talking about Visual Studio Code at this point in the course is that we need to write some code for our Docker containers. Our Docker container at the moment is just the vanilla WordPress image. It hasn't been modified or edited to meet our needs. And in order to expose port 80 within the container to our Raspberry Pi local port 80, we had to use the minus P flag in the command line. Now that's all well and good. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But ideally we, need, we would like a system where we can simply run a single command on the command line and it will create a customized version of the WordPress container along with the other containers that we need that we've talked about in the past, such as a Nginx container and a SQL container. And all of this does require us to be able to edit some code. Normally, we would edit code locally on our computer, and we would push those changes to our Raspberry Pi as part of a continuous integration pipeline. But because we're setting this up for the first time, it's completely normal to actually be editing code on the Pi to get the architecture set up and make sure it's working. So that's why I'm using Visual Studio Code. It is the most popular code editor available. It is used by millions of people around the world. And that's because it's completely free and it supports the majority of languages. You pick a language, it almost definitely supports it. But the most exciting part of Visual Studio Code, particularly for this project at this point, is that you can edit files remotely. And we're going to see yet again another advantage of setting up an SSH alias and using public private key authentication when we do this because Visual Studio Code will understand that, we can just go down a list of possible connections, find Pi, and connect to it. And once we've connected to it, we can edit any file we like. So let's go over now to my desktop, where we're going to set all of this up and get going. Okay, here we are on my desktop. To more easily show what Visual Studio Code is doing, I'm going to first create a file that we can edit. So I'm going to SSH into my Pi using my alias Pi. And now that I'm in my user's home directory, I'm going to create a new directory where we're going to create our website. MKDIR website. I'm going to go into the website directory and I'm going to create a file that I expect to edit from Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to call it Dockerfile. Now that name isn't accidental. A Dockerfile is a file that Docker will pick up on if you're running Docker from within the directory where the Docker file exists. And the Docker file contains the instructions to basically build an image. Or, in our case, it'll contain the instructions to edit a base image, where our base images are WordPress, SQL, and Nginx. So I'm going to go into the Docker file using nano, and I'll add something, hello world, for example, so that we can see there is something in there and we can edit it. Okay. With that done, we can now open Visual Studio Code. Now for me, I will do that by typing code here. And it opens up. And now we're going to install the extension that we need to connect to our Raspberry Pi using Visual Studio Code, and that's called Remote SSH. So if we click on the extensions button I'm highlighting here, and when we search for extensions, we search for Remote SSH, You'll see here the uh, plugin by Microsoft, the extension, sorry, by Microsoft. When you click on it, you'll get a little green button here which says install. As I already have it installed, I've just got uninstall and disable. But if you click on install, and then when it's complete, restart your Visual Studio window, you're ready to go. So I'll close that down, and I'll get the extensions window out of the way. So if you've done that, this will be where you are. Now, most things in Visual Studio Code are done by typing Control shift p and that gives you access to the console. And what I'm going to type now is remote ssh connect to host. And you can see it highlighted there. If I press enter here, it'll give us a list of the hosts. Now, it's found these hosts from my hidden.ssh directory on my local computer in the config file where my aliases are defined. So these two I created for the course. I've got my internal alias and I've got my external alias. 
So I click on my internal alias, a new Visual Studio window is created, connecting to my Pi. And there we go, we are now connected to my Raspberry Pi. You can even see the Pi down here, I've got the terminal open down here. So let's open the folder website and let's get editing that file. So if I go to website, click OK. So that says home Pi website, click OK. It's refreshing. Great. And the Docker file is the only file in there and it's open for me. And there we go, it says hello world. Hello, I have been edited by VS Code, Control S. Okay, so hopefully if we go back into my Raspberry Pi and if we are to concatenate out the file, docker file, as follows, using cat, we should see the message has been changed. There we go. So that's it. Hopefully you found this useful. We will be using Visual Studio Code for the next few videos by connecting to the Pi remotely to make some changes. Normally you would make edits locally and push them to live using a continuous integration pipeline. But in this case, we are going to be doing some edits on the Pi using Visual Studio Code on our local computer just to get the Docker system set up so we can get it working as we want to. This is the easiest way of doing it. It's a completely legitimate, <coughs> legitimate way of doing it. So please do follow on in the follow videos, following videos, excuse me. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it useful, please do like and subscribe. If you could subscribe to my course, that makes my life much easier because it shows that people are interested and I can continue producing these videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.